Hi, how you doing? In this video, we're going to look at what some may say is a controversial opinion. This is a wonderful little book that captures a moment in the history of recreational violence better than any other I've come across. The publication date isn't clear, but the foreword is dated 1934, so it's definitely there or thereabouts in age. Time for a tangent. Here we go again. We know that modern catch wrestling comes mainly from traditional catchers catch can, and that that in turn was heavily influenced by Lancashire wrestling. But what we also know is that there was a lot of crossover, transmission of information, with jiu-jitsu in the early days of the 20th century. We can't know for certain what techniques passed in what direction, or whether the techniques all existed on both sides of the relationship, but this book marks that period better than any other that I've seen. The name on the cover is W. Billy Wood, but the book was actually written by Ernest John Harrison. Billy Wood was a highly successful wrestler. The book claimed him to be the first Brit to win the world title. He fought and competed at the turn of the century. That's the 1800s to the 1900s. Uh, he enlisted in World War I and then travelled the world competing and coaching alike. He was one of the founders of the all-in wrestling movement, which we've talked about previously, and up until the 50s, when he officially retired from wrestling in his 70s, he ran a fairground boxing and wrestling booth. Ernest Harrison, on the other hand, was never anything more than an enthusiastic amateur when it came to wrestling. But as a young man, work took him to Japan, where he started training in jiu-jitsu. And in 1911, he became the first non-Japanese to attain the rank of Shodan at the Kodokan in Tokyo. It's clear that the two men had a lot of respect for each other, and because of their backgrounds, the book they wrote together is a perfect example of when the two arts met. Anyway, that's not really what we're going to be looking at today. What caught my eye, and I figured I'd share with you, is what this book says about Cumberland and Westmoreland wrestling. Obviously, we studied what Walter Armstrong has to say on the matter, but this book takes a different, and some might say, heretical viewpoint on that most magnificent of arts. I'll, I'll read it to you. I'm satisfied from practical experience and observation that Catch as Catch Can, for example, offers considerably greater scope for use in a real rough and tumble, comprising as it does both groundwork and falls from the standing position, than the Cumberland and Westmoreland school, which restricts the contestants to one method of holding, and therefore inevitably narrows the field of action and the repertoire of tricks. He, he goes on for a little while to talk about how Catch is fantastic. Um, but later on, he, he comes back to this. So I'll read you the second bit as well. This is on the chapter all about Cumberland and Westmoreland. Earlier in these pages, I have made no attempt to conceal my personal opinion that in the wake of more recent developments in the art of wrestling, the aspirant for honours on the mat can do better than to specialise in the Cumberland and Westmoreland style. Although, admittedly, the wider one's range of knowledge and experience, the better. And if one has the necessary time at one's disposal, benefit may accrue from familiarity with the main principles and chips of this particular style. That's quite damning, I think. Owing, however, to my long association with the Japanese art of jiu-jitsu, nowadays generally admitted to be the most comprehensive and practical of all known systems of defence and attack, I cannot help regarding with disfavour any style that deprives the performer of the use of any of his limbs. Thus, while the supporter of the Cumberland and Westmoreland style certainly has a case when he scoffs at the Greco-Roman system for its prohibition of tripping, he himself is no less illogical for favouring a school that forbids free use of the arms. If, moreover, you're contemplating the acquisition of an art likely to be of use in a real emergency, it would surely be a mistake to accustom yourself to a style in which the arms play a very secondary part in achieving victory. I do not, of course, deny that even in the Cumberland and Westmoreland style the arms are of material service as auxiliaries, but compared with the role assigned to those limbs in the catch as catch can and Greco-Roman styles, not to mention jiu-jitsu, their share in the composition of all tricks in the repertoire of the first names is merely negligible. With the free use of the arms permitted in catch as catch can, virtually any throw or hold known to Cumberland and Westmoreland can be even more effectively applied in the former style the efficacy of which is still further enhanced by the variety of methods alike from the standing position 
and on the ground, rendered available by the use of arms and legs in combination and independently. A cursory review, as what has been said about the catch-as-catch-can style, will convince the student that a number of the best-known tricks of Cumberland and Westmoreland already form an integral part of the former's repertoire. The cross-buttock, hank, backheel and flying mare are cases in point, and I shall not, therefore, recapitulate what I have written about those throws in Chapter 3, contenting myself with pointing out the modifications of method necessitated by the Cumberland and Westmoreland armhold. I think it's clear that Walter wouldn't approve, but in fairness, I personally find it very hard to disagree with anything he's written. The idea that taking your arms out of the fight and just holding them together behind someone's back makes you more effective at fighting does seem a little odd. But yeah, what do you think? Is this actually a complete travesty of justice based on nothing more than outright jealousy or against one of the pinnacles of wrestling? Or do Harrison and Wood have a point? Stick something in the comments. Let me know. This book is full of wonderful little throwaway comments. He talks in passing about strangles in Catch's Catch Can in the introduction. So it gives us a real insight into the art as it was practiced in the past. So I'm definitely going to talk more about this and, and look at some of the other things in this book because it feels a little different. And whether it feels different because it's got heavy jiu-jitsu influence in it, or whether it feels different because it's a more modern look at traditional catch, rather than the older looks that we've normally had. Or wait, maybe it's just because it's written by somebody that views the art favourably. It's hard to say. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those future videos. Before I go, I'd just like to say that if you're enjoying the videos that I'm pushing out at the moment, I'm currently on day 12 or 13 of my daily video run, and I'm not planning on stopping just yet, there are a few ways you can support this channel. You can sign up at Patreon. There's a link in the description. I only ever put out one paid post a month there, and that's where I tend to post scans and transcriptions of the book collection that I've accumulated over the years. Or you could become a member here on YouTube. I post videos and tutorials, instructionals here for, for members. Thanks to a good friend, I've recently managed to recover a lot of the videos that I made some years ago and thought I'd lost, and so I'll be drip-feeding them out for members over the next few months. There's a thanks button underneath each video, which is a way to support the channel without any ongoing commitment. Or, if like many people, money's a little tight, you can simply like the video and maybe consider sharing it somewhere off YouTube. It's those videos that are posted on Facebook or Reddit or even in discussion forums that seem to get the most views. And in fairness, views is what helps the channel grow. So thanks very much for watching. And to those of you still here, at the end of the video, fight team.